Hello, I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic, and in this video, let's explore what to expect from taking photos with the Xiaomi 13T Pro. We'll take a quick look together at about 200 test photos taken in a number of locations from Prague to Germany and Poland. What will you see in this video? First, we will summarize the key parameters and then start exploring the 200 test photos. But first, one important note. The technical specifications of the camera are actually the same as those of Xiaomi 13T. So make sure to check out my review of this Type 2. You can now see the link to the video. The only significant difference is that Xiaomi 13T Pro can shoot video in 8K. So what should we know about the technical specifications? Well, the simple most important fact is that there are three sensors and three lenses. The most important one is this one. It's, it has 24 millimeters and 15 megapixels, which actually makes it the most important part of your uh, workflow, I guess. Then you have the zoom, which is able to zoom up to 50 millimeters. It means uh, two times. Uh, it has also 50 megapixels and uh, you'll be using it for landscapes and beautiful views like this. And of course, for portraits as well. And then do not forget, there is the third sensor and third lens, which is ultra wide. It has only 12 megapixels, but still it's very, very useful. And as you can see from these examples, it can give you a lot of creativity. It uh, has about 15 millimeters. There is one more important technical aspect I'd like to mention, and it's uh, zooming. We can see this is ultra wide view. This is two times 50 millimeters and this would be 10 times digital zoom. So the quality is not good. But again, if I just zoom back, you can see that that's where I am standing. And even with zooming digitally, I am well able to get some really more or less usable results. And now I suggest we just jump into many scenes, many sceneries, and uh, we'll just see what to expect from this camera. So this is a clear example of uh, great locations, beautiful mountains of Valachia in Moravia, the Czech Republic. And it's the autumn weather is fantastic, a lot of clouds, a lot of greenery. So you, you can really feel that the, the mobile just will not let you down. If we just jump to some more complicated, more complex light, this is not completely automatic that a mobile phone would be able to give you such a great details, such a great playfulness with uh, light and shadows. So I have to say I was politely surprised that even under that rather complex and complicated conditions, the results are really good. Let's see some animals. <laughs> and again, we've seen this picture before. This is the main lens, main sensor and some details and portrait mode. Just one thing, do not forget that in portrait mode, the background is blurred by software. If you want to see details and if you start exploring every single hair of this cow, you might say, oh, well, this is not perfect and I can see some errors here. Yes, of course, this is just a bit of trick of portrait modes. But frankly, would you see that if it's on Facebook or Instagram? No, you would not. But still, please do count with the simple fact that all that magic is done not by lenses, but by the algorithms inside of your camera. Let's go further and once again, landscape and trees and a lot of autumn colors and things we just can't really get wrong. And this is important to see because sometimes some mobile phones are able to overblown the colors, which is not happening here. So you just should get really pleasant and good results in scenes like that with a great light and great scenery. Uh, well, as you can see, I was zooming digitally maybe to five or six, I think. And again, be a little bit careful because if you study these photos in bigger detail, you might see that the quality really goes down. So my advice again would be find sceneries like this and try not to use digital zoom too much. 
let's change location. Let's go down from the hills and see a celebration in a local village. And uh, you can see this is one of the most complex and most complicated things to take shots of because the musicians are moving, they are singing, they are playing. The movement means that quite often it uh, would ruin your shot. My point is that if you know how to do it, if you are able to use and build your scene carefully, the results would just be really nice as here. And some more details from this celebration, which in fact was dedicated to bees, honey and slivovets. It means a local drink, which you can see. And let's go outside, because the sun has set and we have something which is called blue hour. It means it's not completely dark, but the sky is a little bit blue and the shots you would be taking would just be really interesting and intriguing. And once again, I have to say I quite like the result I got here. In the morning, there was no sunshine and now the things get really more complex, more complicated because you know that once there is not intensive and beautiful light, it's always better to try to concentrate on some details and cats and flowers and colors and well, nice dogs pretending being bad dogs. And now let us jump to a very different location. This is Charles Bridge in the very center of Prague and I was filming a video with my friends and I tested the camera under these very complex and tough conditions and you can see that even maybe 10-15 minutes before the, the sun rises the results again are quite nice and I, I was really surprised because these weather conditions typically are not good for photography, not speaking about mobile photos, but if you know how to find some nice compositions you are probably on a good way for decent or good photos and some overall view of famous Charles Bridge and the trees and the river around it. And one more test photo that from downtown Prague and the ultra wide lens and 50 millimeters lens. And if you know how to do it, you just will not be disappointed. Although <laughs> once again, I have to repeat, please do remember that if you are in the bright colors in the bright light like here in the mountains of Poland in the border of with the Czech Republic you just will have a much easier situation than if you just happen to be at beautiful location like here in Germany uh, in a rather dull and boring day. Uh, so I was quite sad because I really always wanted to see this one of the most photographed places in Europe. It's Devil's Bridge in Germany. I did really a lot of test shots and a lot of attempts and you can see that after all these results are quite nice but just imagine if the sun would be shining, it would be even much more beautiful. Which actually turns us to one note, which is very important. If you ask me what would be the area where that sort of mid-range mobile phones would just not be able to match the results, the photos taken by, I don't know, the latest iPhones. And this would be in, in these situations when you do not have intensive light, when you do not have a lot of colors and you simply have to count on the image processing a lot. And uh, my biggest and probably maybe the only really serious complaint about that uh, mobile would be that the top level mobiles would be able to process shots like that a little bit more effectively. The green would be greener and the shadows would be just slightly lighter and the results would be a little bit better. But if we now jump uh, to Poland, to beautiful light, beautiful locations and this famous church from 17th century in the city of Javor, you see that here we are able to get great results because there is a lot of colors, the sky is amazing. So if you are just starting with mobile photography, please do remember that in fact the mobile influences maybe 20% of the result, rest is on composition and light, of course. Some more views of the inside of this beautiful church. And please do not forget that you have that ultra wide lens, which is able to provide you these incredibly interesting views, like here from inside of the church. 
once more, city of Poznań, beautiful old city. Apologies to my Polish friends, but of course, once you are done with the reconstruction, it'll be much more beautiful. This is ultra wide shot. This would be 50 millimeters, and this would be digital zoom to 10 times. And still, there is a reasonable amount of details. So, although I would never tell you use digital zoom when you simply need to shoot things like this, uh, you'll probably be able to do so. Although, again, the quality would not be exciting. And if the weather is really terrible like here, you'd be really happy to find details like this, like mushroom in the park, or this touching place. This is a cemetery where British soldiers are buried in the center of the Polish city of Poznań from the Second World War, as you can see from the tombstones. And it's really a very peaceful place to visit. And some more pictures from not exciting light from the old cathedrals in the city of Poznań. And uh, as you can see, these are probably not shots you would be excited about, but it is fair to say that no mobile, no camera under the sun is able to give you exciting results in light like this. So do not complain too much and try to find some more interesting shots or do use some tricks like combining colorful details like a flower is uh, just not far away from my lens, a biker and the city in background. And you can see that although it's <laughs> pretty basic composition, the result is actually quite interesting. But of course, more colors are you able to squeeze into your frame, better results you'll get in these days of a lot of fog and uh, no sunshine at all. One more old city, city of Leszno in Poland, and again, ultra wide lens and bit of colors. And this is just example how portrait mode works. It means it blurs the background and gives a lot of perspective to shots like this. So do not hesitate to use it. You might be really surprised. One more stop, one more beautiful city in Poland, Jelenia Gora, not far away from the border of the Czech Republic. And you can again see the weather was not exciting. And one more point to make that, yes, if you have a latest iPhone, for instance, the processing would be slightly better. The colors would be more bright at, and so on. But again, we are speaking about mid-range mobile, so we should not complain too much. But if you ask me to point out one simple thing which you should know where the difference lies, that would be the processing in conditions like that. But to end in a very positive note, I really like the processing in night mode. And uh, I was complaining a little bit when I was testing Xiaomi 13T because I had an impression that under certain conditions, the night mode does not work as it should. But it's certainly not the case here in Xiaomi 13T Pro. And you can see that these results are again quite impressive. So I think that the night mode is one of the things which help you to get quite impressive results, like here in the square of Jelenia Gora. One more point, let's see some examples of video footage. I have to admit, I'm not a big expert on video, so please do not ask me if the results are better or worse than competition. I am just not able to make a reasonable judgment. But what I can do is just to give you some examples and let you to decide. From my perspective, they are pretty good, pretty standard, and uh, all these shots I'm showing you are shot in 4K uh, with 30 frames per second. I should note that if you want, you can even record in 8 K with 24 frames per second, but I don't really think it's that important. Thank you so much for your attention. I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic. Take care.